We're here with Susan Sarandon for Time Magazine's 10 Questions. Thank you for taking the time to speak with Thank us today. Thank you for asking me. It's a pleasure to have you. Your recent role in Enchanted was a delight. What's more fun, playing a good guy or a bad guy? Oh, that's so easy to answer. Definitely a bad guy. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. You know, you, you, all the mean things that you would love to say, that you relish, you, that you'd never say because you're trying to be a generous person, you know, suddenly you're, you have license to be and do. And they're just more interesting, usually. As an activist who can sometimes be seen as a little bit controversial, how do you find a balance between being confidently assertive and overly aggressive? You know, first of all, the characters that I've played eventually seem like strong women, but when you're in them, they're very conflicted. Uh, I'm not interested in playing heroes that burst onto the scene fully formed, knowing what they're doing. I think it's a much more complicated process than that, and they're usually all people who are becoming the protagonist in their own life, but it's costing them to, to get there. The only thing that gives me the courage, because I'm kind of a shy person, to do some of the things that I've done is the idea of living with myself afterwards if I haven't taken advantage of a situation or if I haven't asked a question or if I haven't um, questioned something. For instance, the war. You know, I just thought I can't let this go by without asking questions. It's too big a deal and no one's asking. I guess I've never seen myself as being aggressive as much as clear on trying to understand a situation so that people can make their own decisions. How do you feel about the possibility that we could have a woman as president? Lots of countries have women heading their country. It's, it's a concept that doesn't seem that foreign to me. For me, it's important which woman. I mean, Margaret Thatcher was a woman and I didn't support her. And I find it insulting to assume uh, that because you're a woman, you would automatically back any woman, or because you're a person of color, that you would automatically back anyone of color. I think it's a little more complicated than that. But, uh, you know, there's absolutely no reason why a woman shouldn't be in that office. I don't see it as being such a big deal. I'm not sure about this particular woman, but uh, she wouldn't be my first choice. But there's no reason why, you know, a woman or a person of color or a person of whatever faith. I mean, I think Americans are bigger than that and better than that, that they, that would be the only thing that would determine something for them. What do you think of the current U.S. foreign policy and how mm -hmm. George Bush is trying to throw his weight around in the Middle East? Well, clearly it's been a disaster. Uh, it's made us much less safe. It's made the world much less safe. It's cost us our moral standing in the world. I've spent a lot of time with veterans of this war and I, I think there's a huge disconnect between the real war and the politicized war and I think I, I, I wish that our representatives had more experience of the real war when they're making their decisions. And my overall feeling about the whole Iraq situation is just Harper, you know, I'm just heartbroken for the for the people that are over there one, two, three times now, mm -hmm. um, and we continue our lives. If it doesn't touch, if we're not part of that one percent that it immediately touches, it's so easy to forget about that. And and I and I hope that we start to be more supportive of the returning vets because that's a huge, huge challenge that no one's really dealing with. When you look back on your career, are you happy with the way it has evolved? Do you enjoy the roles that you play now as much as you did the ones that you played in the beginning yeah, of your career? Yeah, I'm still having a really good time. I'm kind of turning into Gene Hackman. I'm doing a lot of these supporting, <laughs> kind of juicy supporting parts now, but I don't mind. It gives me more time off. It's also nice not to carry the entire film sometime. I, mm -hmm. My ego isn't bruised by not playing the lead in a, in a film. I'm a little bit lazy. I, I suffer a little bit from inertia. So, you know, it forces me to make contact with people, to learn about different microcosms, to, to really look in depth. It, it's kind of like enforced reincarnation mm -hmm. and enforced compassion. And the thing that you find out when, you, when you're an actor over a long period of time is that we're not so different. Everyone's afraid of the same thing. Everyone needs the same thing. And given a set of circumstances, you can find yourself doing things that you never thought or feeling things that you never thought yourself capable of feeling or doing. So it makes you 
kind of much less judgmental and more compassionate, you know, and that's not a bad exercise to go through every time you go to work.